We will uh, now break and uh, send you to Las Vegas, where earlier today, Matt Underwood, who we sent representing STO to cover the winter meetings, sat down with Indians general manager, Mark Shapiro. From the Bellagio Hotel on the Las Vegas Strip here in Las Vegas, Nevada, baseball's winter meetings commencing here this afternoon. Welcome in, everyone. Matt Underwood, joined now by Indians general manager Mark Shapiro, who came here with a, not a long laundry list, but obviously a number of objectives that you'd like to try to get accomplished. Mark, you've told me in the past, though, that sometimes the winter meetings are not the most conducive environment to actually getting a deal done. But how much have you, have you laid a lot of groundwork, I guess, is the question. Well, we're about 24 hours in, so we're not that far in. I, look, I think there are, logistically, it is conducive because you've got all the agents and you've got all the other teams in one place, so it's easy to get together. It's easy right. to have meetings, and uh, just the fact that you're all in one place, you know, you might even have meetings that you hadn't thought of having before. So uh, that's a positive. You've got your scouts here, so you can really blue sky and come up with some creative ideas as well. Um, what I think you need to be careful to avoid is the emotion, uh, and the competitiveness that also happens when you get all your competitors in one place too and you start to hear rumors circulating and uh, so we need to be careful to stick to our strategy and our plan uh, in order to ensure that uh, we make some progress towards filling our off-season uh, laundry list. Mark, we in the media and fans in general with the internet especially, we get consumed by the rumor mill. What about from your perspective behind closed doors? Do you guys hear these same rumors that we're hearing and do you have to react to them as well? Well, we hear them. You know, and again, I think what's important is, you know, we, we utilize, try to utilize all the information we can. Uh, it's important to know what your competitors are doing. It's important to maneuver uh, off of the information. But what's, what also is important is to not let it emotionally impact you, force you to make a decision that's inconsistent with your philosophy or your strategy or your plan. Uh, so a lot of times, you know, I'll read something and it's uh, from one of our direct competitors and I start to get pretty upset and you know start to feel that pressure we've got to do something now so uh, you've got to back off in the emotion but you do also need to pay attention to what you're hearing because it may alert you to a, uh, you know something one of your competitors are doing or something that you need to get done quickly I'm sure some of our viewers have have read different things could you prioritize for us your list what you want to get accomplished this offseason you know what I think what I've been consistent on is I think we've got three clear areas to address uh, you know we we need a closer uh, someone to pitch at the end of the game uh, we need an infielder somewhere uh, on the infield uh, and I'd sure like to get a middle of the rotation starter um, that's the list we're never going to get done all those guys we're going to be somewhat limited financially to what we can do um, and I think to prioritize would probably be a mistake because the way I've looked at it always is that you know we got to go after the guy that can make the biggest impact uh, and is also the best value so it allows us to do the most and answer the most holes so uh, you know that may not be you know if I really had to say I think that the starter is probably the area of greatest need but that's probably the least realistic for us to get done Mark, I've read that Johnny Peralta has played, uh, if not exclusively, mostly third base uh, during winter ball. Uh, what are your reports on how he's played there, and how much does that affect your decision-making this offseason? Well, it doesn't affect the decision-making at all. It's something uh, that if I had to say the likelihood of him being switched this year is probably unlikely. But at the same time, it only helps to take advantage of the fact he's playing down there. We get some time at third. He has looked good. Uh, he's gotten more and more comfortable as time's gone on, so that's a good thing. Uh, just going to give us greater flexibility planning the team going forward, and you know from our conversations in the past, that flexibility is a, is a very strong asset to us. There have been so much, uh, so much has been focused on the economy. The nation's economy is not good, that's obvious. How much do you think that has an impact on deals being done or not being done in this case? Well, I think to, to say the economy is not a factor would just be like putting your head in the sand. That it, it's affecting each and every team uh, in reality with their revenues. Uh, um, I think some teams, even with the impact on their revenues, it's not going to affect how they operate. You know, they just have different operating uh, you know, edicts from their ownership and the greater ability maybe to, to withstand that. But uh, in Cleveland, we are faced with an economic reality that's even greater than what the nation and the world are facing right now because we were already kind of in a slump before this happened. So uh, it's just additional challenges. Nothing that should derail our ability to get something done, but something that makes it a little bit more of a challenge. Do you think also the reason we haven't seen much free agent activity or, or many deals getting done is the fact that everybody's maybe waiting for the CC Sabathia deal to get done first and, and maybe bust loose the logjam? Yeah, anything I have would be a guess on that, but I think there's not any one reason that there's 
there's been a, a kind of a slowness of the pace this year. I think that the international and national economic conditions are part of it. Uh, the lack of real impact talent beyond four or five guys is, is also part of it. Um, and so I just think you've got smaller numbers of teams trying to, uh, you know, and smaller numbers of resources trying to be divided over a, a very small number of guys. And at some point that bottleneck will break loose, and I think you'll see a flurry of activity. Well, Mark, thanks so much for your time. Hopefully we'll see a flurry of activity for as far as the Indians are concerned before the week's over. Oh, we're working to try to give some activity. I don't know about a flurry. <laughs> but, uh... All right, that's Indians general manager Mark Shapiro. Bruce, back to you in the studio. And, of course, we'll have the latest as it breaks here in Las Vegas. Okay, Matt, thank you very much. I guess, um, you know, I, I thought they'd be sitting, but I guess they just uh, got around overlooking the pool.